Hey everyone, it's Andy here. I'm in the jungle and hopefully this, this type of episode here is something that um, almost anyone can do. It's a nice way to spend a half a day or a full day or even a couple of hours. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set some traps up, catch some shrimp, hopefully some uh, crawfish, yabbies, uh, freshwater lobsters, whatever you want to call them. And then I'm going to make a fig and olive tepanade something different for me. Um, I'm always looking for different things to do and that, that struck me as being yeah, something tasty. And I'm also going to make some tortilla chips or um, corn tortillas from scratch hopefully. So that'll be interesting. I don't know if you guys can see that but the red belly black snake has just gone into the water. He's just under the water. I can still see him there. He doesn't want to come out. Here he comes. No, he's, yeah, there he is. He's just behind that um, big orange rock there. It's about as close as I want to get to him because he's quite poisonous. He's got a little tight bit closer. There we go. Now he's going to pretend like he's not there. I don't know how long he can hold his breath for. So, yeah, it's that was interesting. Red belly black snake in the water. Um, they can kill you, but most snakes they just want to get out of the road. And uh, I've read that red belly black snakes can actually um, limit how much poison they put in you. So if it's just a defensive bite, um, they won't inject much at all. So, but still, you know, when you're out in the middle of nowhere like this. Just got to be a bit careful. I suggest just to leave him alone. And as I was just talking and walking, I almost stepped on a keelback snake. He's just in the grass there. Oh, there he goes. Oh, I lost him. Oh, there he is. They um, they actually eat uh, cane toads, so they're a, they're a good guy. They're not venomous to humans, as far as I can tell. But I almost stepped on him. That gives me a fright. All right, gotta pay more attention. But yeah, two snakes in oh, five minutes. <laughs> I was hoping to get a couple of native figs. These are, are small figs, but they're definitely not right. They're really hard. Oh, this looks like a nice spot. I think we'll set up, set up around here. Oh, check this out. Check this out, there's a couple of yabby or crawfish nippers. Oh, um, we'll get a few of those as well. Doesn't get much more, more peaceful than this. The river's just nice and still. There's a little trickle in it. It's a um, nice shady spot just here. I'm going to have a little muesli bar. And I'm going to use a couple of bits of muesli bar as my bait. For the shrimp traps. There we go. That's all I need for a trap. So there's a, a little section of uh, like weed here, and all the shrimp and the um, the crayfish or crawfish or yabbies will be hiding in this this weed. So we'll get four of these in the water, and then we'll go hunt some um, yeah crayfish as well. And we'll just spread them all around. One there. One over there. We'll just go to a smaller section of creek where we can turn over rocks and look for, for yabbies or crawfish. Always enjoy exploring in the forest. And I'm sure some of you are wondering how I came up with the, um, the fig and olive tepanade. I, I never actually heard about it until I was doing a little bit of a search for what am I going to film next? And uh, yeah, I, I don't know what I put in first, the um, the fig or the olive, but it sounded like a really nice, nice idea. Oh, hang on, here we go. So, um, yeah, it's just flowing. Lots of good sized rocks, ones I can lift up, and um, yeah, nice and clear. Uh, actually, this is interesting, just before we start. Have a look, see? Water's flowing, water's flowing, water's flowing, water's flowing, water's gone. Look at that. It has gone underground. There is no water 
flowing here. And that's actually a, a very common thing in Australia. Um, when it gets dry, the water tends to go underground. It'll still follow the same creek, same river. Well, creek mainly. But um, yeah, well, here's some more, some more figs. Lots of figs, but they're so tiny. Maybe five mil across. They they need to be at least three times that size before we can can eat them. Lucky I brought some figs with me. <laughs> but one day, yeah, I'll go out and eat some wild figs. Right, let's see see about these yabbies, the crawfish. Oh, that little one just took off there. Oh, hang on, there's one there. He's still sitting there. There we go. I think we've got him. Oh, it's going to be hard to get out. He's in a bit of a burrow. They, um, as the uh, the water recedes or, or you know the levels go down, they um, they burrow themselves into the ground. Oh, there we go. We've got him. There he is. Nice little guy, hey. And uh, we'll keep a bunch of these. And now uh, we'll cook them up with the, hopefully with a shrimp. First rock, first crayfish. That's good. Always put the rock back. That way we've still got homes for them when we come back next time. Another nice looking rock. Oh, there's a fish there. Where'd the fish go? That's the problem. They all scoot away as soon as you lift. There he is. Oh, another yabby. Cool, cool, cool. has something under it. Ooh, there's a mud eye. Oh, there goes the shrimp, the um, yabby. Let's get the mud eye. Here we go. Look at that. That is a dragonfly larvae. They're called mud eyes. They're um, used as uh, yeah, fly fishing imitations. But uh, yeah, they're really cool. It's just an insect. They, they go through different stages of, of being like a, a larvae. Then they, they crawl around on rocks like this. And then when they're big enough, they'll be about that big. And they hatch, they crawl up on a rock, and then they turn into a dragonfly. And uh, yeah, these guys are actually very voracious little little critters. Yeah, let's, uh, let's put him back. Now, where was that yabby? I did see a yabby here somewhere. He was under here, I think. Under this rock, maybe. Oh, just heard something over there, on that tree. There's a goanna climbing up. That's cool. So many critters already. And these guys here are excellent fishermen. Very, very good at catching fish. There he goes. Did you just get one? I can't quite see. Let's see what's under this rock. Oh, there goes a nice one. There's a nice one. Oh, he's gone under that rock. Got him, got him. There we go. Got him. I'll go this one here. Got him.
some of these rocks out here. There's not a lot of water, but there's enough to hold these crayfish. There should be one under here. There he is. Look at that. Works perfectly. Hey, little guy. Got him. <sighs> nice. That's um, yeah, one of the bigger ones today. So I'll show you what I do to dispatch these guys. you got to go above their nippers like that. Like that. And then what I'm doing is I'm pinching off pretty much the whole head. There we go. So I've just taken off the front part of his head. There's still movement there, but he's obviously not conscious because his brain's gone. And then there's a bit of goop in here. And we just get the water. And we wash it out. There you go. That is now a super clean dead crayfish. I'll just show you the the head there we go so I've just just pulled that part of the head off and washed out the um, the guts the internal organs and uh, when we cook that up later on we're gonna eat pretty much everything of that so you notice all the water flowing down here I think this is a really good rock because it has got a bit of water it's it's quite low but it's a big enough rock to have a home under it so I reckon we'll get one out of this I not to stir it up too much. Oh, I might have to wait for it to settle now. Where is he? There's a little one. There we go. More signs of something eating them. Let's see if there's anything under this rock. Yep, there you go. Too fast for me. This one's a bit dry, but you never know. Yep, there he is. Hello, little guy. Come on. Come on out. There you go. So, almost any rock with a crevice has got a, a little crayfish in, under it. Oh, there are a lot of these guys, and I see another hole just here. Okay, we'll make this the last rock before we go and check the traps. Nice big one. There's a hole, but he's not there. Must be in the hole. All right, put it back. Oh, well, we've got a few. It's always nice being out here. That dragonfly lava or the um, mud eye, that was a interesting thing. Um, we'll go check the traps now. We should have fish, shrimp, maybe a few more uh, crayfish. Where's the first trap? There's the first trap, right in the sun. There's lots of little fish in it. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, hundreds and hundreds of little fish. Yeah, that's not what we're after. All right, we'll let these guys go. Off you go, little fishes. Right, let's check the trap over here. It's in the shade. Let's see. Not very few fish in that one. Very few fish. And no shrimps or yabbies or crayfish. Nature never ceases to amaze. Oh, they're all gone. There was like a hundred top knot pigeons. They might come back. All feeding on a palm tree right there. There's one there. Actually two there. Oh, there's a nice little spot, little table here. Shift a couple of rocks, and uh, yeah, beautiful little spot to cook up my hmm, late lunch. Here we have all our crawfish or yabbies. They've all got their heads removed. There must be, yeah, I'd say close to 20 there. We'll just put them there. Ah, nice haul, nice haul. It's going to be, um, yeah. Really nice. Okay, let's get out my little kitchen. Uh, little hiking pots. Cutlery. My stove. And where are we? Yeah, get this one out too. This is a new little gadget. I'll 
show you that in a second. This is jet boil. It's um, yeah, really compact, really fast boiling water. This setup's really good because I've got these little titanium. There's um, two pans that double as lids and two pots and the gas bottle for the jet boil fits right inside so whenever I'm going for a little hike or on the boat this this thing is really handy because you can't always make fires everywhere so some places it's not allowed we might um, level that out a little bit but there we go very nice I'll just grab some water from right behind me here let's see that's yeah, about almost a cup's worth now I'm supposed to use uh, fresh figs but what I've done is I've got dried figs and soaked them in water while I was hiking and what we want to do is we want to boil them in some water we'll put the water in there now just be careful you don't um, scoop up uh, baby cane toad tadpoles because if you happen to get one of those in your food, that can make you really sick. Um, and as you can see, all these little black dots here, all these little little guys here. See if I can catch one. There he is. So this is actually it's not a frog. It's a cane toad tadpole. And even at that size, they have toxins in them. So just be careful you don't drink or eat or cook one of those guys. Anyway. <laughs> Actually, I should have just killed him, but I'm so used to letting things go. All right, well, um, we'll boil our figs for a... Let's, let's boil them for about 20 minutes. There we go. First click. So that's actually boiling nicely, but I want to make the corn tortillas or tortilla chips or corn chips. So we'll just take that off the heat. Turn that off for a second. There we go. That'll stay nice and warm. Just leave him there. Got some water here. Oh, there we go. And we just need to get this water nice and hot. There we go. That's nice and hot. And uh, we'll just turn that off. Put the figs back on. Yeah, I'm just going to use the polenta here. Put that into hot water. And the ratio is three quarters water to one of polenta. And this is this is supposed to form a dough. A tablespoon, or a bit less, a tablespoon of olive oil there we go do half a teaspoon of salt it really picks my spirits up when I come in the bush like this it's uh, it's just so nice it's there's no one around it's it's peaceful it's actually quite windy outside which is why I'm not not filming on the ocean in the boat or anything like that but uh, like catching these guys is um, it's a lot of fun you know I, I really enjoy exploring like see the goannas see the snakes those pigeons back there never seen that before you guys should uh yeah take your kids just do it for yourself as well it's um it's really good to get out slow down and just just be be <laughs> oh i think that's now cool enough let's uh let's start making these tortillas so i don't think i mentioned it these um these little cooking pots uh come from drifter they're really nice lightweight and uh, yeah, just great for camping. All titanium. These these little snow peak cutlery. That's that's also from Drifter. It's a set of three. Um, this here is actually from like I got this from Amazon. You can you can see the link in my Amazon shop. But uh, I think this is going to be quite interesting. So while we while we wait for the uh, the tortilla mix to to cool down, we'll get our ingredients ready for the for the fig and olive tepanade. This is uh, this is going to be delicious some black figs we want quite a few of those I'm gonna get rid of the juice so then we want um, we want all the figs in there come on figs out you come actually no I'm not gonna fit it all in about 150 grams of olives and we want a few little capers in there capers always um, spice things up a little bit we'll put in let's see uh, maybe maybe 10 10 capers in there we get two cloves of garlic a little bit of pepper, a little bit of a nice dollop of salt. Use a bit less than half a lemon. We'll see how that works. Seeds in tepanade is a big no-no. It's so nice having a little river here. I can just 
wash my hands when I'm cooking. <laughs> and I don't take a big container of oil, so I've just got a little spice container. And I just take the amount of oil that I need, and I'm going to use maybe two-thirds of what's there. Good quality olive oil. That's, um, yeah, that's, that's enough to cook the, um, the crayfish or crawfish. Now, this would be fun. Yep, that's, that's down tight. Hold it in one hand, and pull this in the other. Oh, look at that! Who would have thought a little mixer like this is, oh, it's so cool. Oh, yep, that's going. It's actually probably boiling a little too fast. Let's um, turn that down just a tad. There we go. Oh, beautiful. There you go. You can, I don't know if you can see them, but they're just simmering away there. I've done this too quickly. I need to have those in here. Because this is olive tapenade at the moment, but I want fig and olive tapenade. So I've jumped the gun a bit there. I'm just going to let that reduce a little bit more. And while I'm waiting for that, this is almost, yeah, it's almost cool enough. I'm going to make myself a little, little plate. Now I've done this before. Let's see if we can make it nice. So it's always crisscross, crisscross, under, over, under, over, under, over. There we go. Um, can't remember the episode I did this on. It was a like a seafood, seafood one. I did it with a coconut palm leaf. But as long as you go under and over, it's uh, yeah, it's quite. You can see the pattern there. It's like a crisscross. Yeah, almost done. Just do a little bit of trimming. It's only a single-use plate. There we go, nice little plate. All right, I think they're reduced down enough. Yeah, yep, they're good. Mmm, nice and uh, sweet. I want to drink that juice. All right, that'll be really nice. Let those cool down, and then we'll put them in the tepanade. Let's make our corn chips. They will take a little bit longer. So we'll just grab a, a little a little ball of corn polenta flour. And we'll just bake it over a little little stove here. That should work. Normally you do these in an oven, but um, yeah. I don't have an oven and I I don't really want to make a fire today. Hey, I'm always learning. I think, there we go, I can just lift that up like that. So now we've got the, um, yeah, the olive mix. Mmm, that actually tastes really good. Get rid of a bit of more, more moisture. We don't want any more moisture in that. There we go, and we'll put the figs in. Oh, there we go. There might be too many figs. All right, we'll just use that many figs. And then we'll put the lid back on. All right, and there we are. Beautiful. Now, some more zipping. So this is actually called a hand shredder. Oh yes, look at that. I've got to try that. Where is my spoon? I'll just use a little knife. Look at that. That actually looks... Oh, it smells so good. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. A bit more salt, maybe. That's, um, that's actually really delicious, that fig and olive tepanade. Oh, that is... Um, I'm going to do that again. All right. It's, um, it's just starting to smoke, and in they go. Oh, yes. Yeah, they're sizzling a lot because there's a lot of moisture in them. Oh, but, yeah, they're, they're good. They're nice. Yeah. Well, look at the colour on that one. Look at it. It's changed, changed colour halfway. Oh, that's cool. That looks really cool. Look at that. He's, he's changed colour halfway through. All right. These guys will only take like a, a couple of minutes to cook, if that. That big guy needs to be turned over. 
You can see the, the colour change in front of your eyes there. Yummy. And you know what we'll do? We'll put a little bit of this sauce in. There we go. That should add a nice depth of flavour. Mmm. Bit of caramelised fig in there. Very nice. Yep, they're definitely done. Mmm. Yep, that's it. We're done. Got our crawfish there. Yabbies. Very nice. And the piece de resistance. Has this come off? There we go. We'll just leave that in the bowl. Look at that. That is my uh, pre dinner, pre dinner dinner. Mm. All right, let's try one of these little suckers. Mm. At this size, I'm just going to eat everything. I might break a little bit of the nipper in half. Oh, they're quite hard actually. Let's let's eat everything except for the nippers. Mmm, very crunchy. Oh, my friend the bird's back. Mmm. Don't know about these nippers, they're very hard. Well, I'll just eat the, the back part of the nipper. There we go. Well, let's try this, this tepanade with the tortilla chips. Mmm, look at that. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Fig and olive tepanar, that is delicious. Ah. Oh. Mmm. Can you see the bird over there? He's um just getting his little afternoon dinner just as the sun's setting. So the wind's settled right down. It's uh, yeah, very peaceful. Mmm. That's actually a nice shot of him over there. Let's get the camera out. But I'm telling you, that um, that tepanade with the the, uh, the yabbies, mmm, very yummy. All right, let's see if we can see him. Where is he? There he is. Hello, little fella. Mmm. Hope I didn't take too many of your your yabbies for dinner. Yeah, cool. That's the thing. Whoop! There you go. She's got a fish. That's the cool thing about being in the, in nature like this. I'm just I'm just sitting here nice and quietly. And normally he'd fly away. I mean he did before. But uh, now that I'm I'm just settled in here and just relaxing, eating my own dinner, he feels nice and safe. And uh, yeah, oh there's another one. Let's go and zoom in on him. There he is. He just he just flew in that one. Hello, little guy. Hey. Very cool. Very, very cool. I wonder if they're a pair. They could be. Oh, I'm going to keep eating. I'll try and describe this uh, this tepanade to you. It's um, yeah, really nice. Ah, oh, but first, <laughs> I'm going to eat another one of these guys. Um, the shell on the body is really not that that tough or crunchy. All right, it, it will crunch, but once it's cooked, the shell's very brittle, and um, mm, I like that I put the fig juice on there and it caramelised. So these guys actually taste even sweeter than they normally do. So I'm going to try and eat the. Um, oh, they're fighting. <laughs> they weren't friends after all. So I'm just eating the the main part of that claw, and leaving. There's just the pincers actually. Oh, get more out of that. Leaving just the, the pincer part. Hmm. But uh, let's try and describe this tepanade here. It is. It smells more like olives. Hmm. It's such a complex flavour. There's olives, there's the sweetness of the figs. A little bit of garlic comes through. I, I only put two cloves in, so it's not too bad. Mm. It's nice and wholesome. It's um, you know, it's got plenty of oil in it. Nice, nice olive oil. 
Mm. I highly recommend fig and olive tepanade. Mm. And uh, these little guys here. I'm sure there's no size limit on these guys. This one got a little bit dark, but yeah, still, still tasty. Mmm, very nice. That's all that's left. That in the head that I, I pinched off earlier. But yeah, fathers, mothers, kids, pester your parents, get, get them to take you to a local creek. Um, lifting up rocks, I always learn, and, and even today, some of those rocks that were like really far out of water, they had nice yabbies under them. Nice crawfish. I keep saying crawfish because most of my viewers, about 40% at the moment, it changes, but they're Americans. So if more Australians watch me, I call them yabbies. <laughs> they're, um, they're pretty much the same thing. They live, live in the same sort of area. You can catch them the same. Oh, but I, I do like this. Got to try that. Mm. And kids, if you see this, don't be scared to try olives, figs, in a, in a combination like this. They're just hints of mild flavour that come through. It's like a, um, mm, like a savoury sweet dip. It's, yeah, it's, it's hard to explain. But, um, yeah, very, very nice. And, uh, and just today, like, I, I figured out how to pinch the heads off these guys. Um, I'll keep doing that. It's, it's a really fast way to, to, to dispatch them. And um, the bonus is they don't crawl out of my pocket because I put them in my pocket when I caught them. They don't crawl out of my pocket while I'm walking and trying to catch more. So, yeah. Always coming up with new ideas. I think I ate most of that claw. Mmm. <laughs> But um, just to be in here, to see all the animals, it's just so nice. Some of you may notice I've got a join button. It's, it's a membership for my channel. It does cost, and what I'm thinking now, instead of doing live videos for everybody, um, I want to do something special for the people who contribute. There's, there's been quite a few people who've contributed over the years, so um, Patreon people, you'll get a link. Um, some of the people who donate through PayPal and also people who join up through the membership now. You'll see at the bottom, I think it's over here, it could be over there, there's a little button that says join. It is a monthly fee, um, but I will do live Q&As for people that help me out. Um, yeah, so you get special little icons. I'll still make videos. There's, there's always going to be my fishing videos. I'll never stop doing that. Well, that's what I hope. Um, you get uh, a little badge, so that if, if, you, if you write a comment, I'll see who is actually a sponsor. And yeah, it should be a bit of fun. So, Q&A with me. Join. <laughs> Join now. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified of my new videos. I do them every week. If you want to see more right now, click the, uh, the links above. Catch you next time.